Hello again and welcome. You're watching another edition of Indian Legends. This time it is the Cricket World Cup of 1983 in England and it's the first of the semi-finals. England captained by Bob Willis and India captained by Kapil Dev. The ground is Old Trafford in Manchester and uh, of course we know exactly what can happen there. It can rain but uh, on this occasion it was uh, one of those days which India would go on to remember for a long time. Let's take a look at the two teams who lined up for this first semi-final. England with Graham Fowler and Chris Tavare opening, David Gower, Alan Lamb, Mike Gatting, Ian Botham, England's all-rounder, Ian Gould, the keeper, Vic Marks, the off-spinner, Graham Dilley, probably the fastest of the England bowlers, with Bob Willis, the captain, and Paul Allott. India, opening with Sunil Gavaskar and Chris Srikanth, Mohinder Amanath, Yashpal Sharma, Sandeep Patil, Kapil Dev, the captain, Syed Kamani to keep wicket, Kirti Azad, Roger Binney, Madan Lal, and Balwinda Singh Sandhu, completing the lineup for India in this first semi-final. Well, Bob Willis won the toss, and uh, he decided that uh, England would bat first. Today we bring you highlights of the semi-final match in the Prudential World Cup of 1983 between England and India. That's a lovely shot. First bound of the day. Beautifully timed shot there by Graham Fowler. Half volley on the leg stump. He put it away to perfection. Absolutely no effort in the shot. Good illustration of uh, perfect timing. Foot to the pitch of the ball, little flick of the wrist, and away she rolled. That's good run, sir. Beautiful shot by Tavre. Allowed it to come on, clipped it away very firmly through mid wicket. run exceptionally well. In fact, all four runs there to Chris Tavry, taking the score on now to 21. And to 22, in fact. And if he hits, he's gone. Well, there have been some very risky runs here, but these two have really taken the life in the hands there. Hit quite firmly to mid wicket. Because Tavare has hit it a little too firmly. Yashwal Sharma's had a good shot at the, the stumps and it just missed. Uh, quite where he intended but uh, they've got a couple of runs Let's say these two are really looking to take these runs Tavry there was almost keen on a third uh, Fowler played eight innings in one day internationals got that remarkably good average of 67 Four fifties already in his eight matches. It's nicely played. Feet into good position, steered it away to long leg. Again, they're coming back for the second, and again it's close. Well, nicely, I give it a good long look, shakes his hand, and shakes his head. But, uh, Indian section of the crowd not quite in agreement with him. Umpire Don Oslier to make this decision, looking very, very carefully and attentively. And just beating him in, of course, that what these television replays do throw up is that if the ball strikes the wicket direct, what a huge time difference it is compared with going to the keeper and the keeper putting down the stumps. It's a difference of two or three yards in the, in the running of the batsman. Yes, I think that was a very good decision there by Ampere Oslia. And that's a good-looking shot. And that uh, 
That big gap between cover and mid-off. And it's a slight error, and this is uh, exceptionally good running that they've made three out of it. Must say, exceedingly lively running between the wickets here this morning by these two. Still no change, still seeing the two opening bowlers in it. Foul out a little flick there outside the off stump. Sandu just drifted away from him. This kind of very good form that Fowler's in can almost lead you into error. You feel you can hit almost anything that comes along. This ball's certainly running for him at the moment. And he's cracked that away on the offside. So in vain. Looking to hit that direction of mid-off. Rudev thinking no change is necessary yet. Continues himself and is beautifully put away through mid-wicket by Tavre. There was a lovely stroke again. That's going to be four more. Forty-eight for no wicket in the twelfth over. Getting that away through the gap on the offside. The outfield pretty quick. Four runs. 50 up. A very promising start indeed for England. Good striking rate. These two have picked up the tempo after a quiet beginning. Over the top. Over the top of uh, Madden Lyle at uh, Deepish Madon for four runs. Graham Fowler moves on to 31, and England to 64 for no wicket in the 15th over. The shot of a man in form. Graham Fowler picked it up and deposited it over the top of Wideish Midon. Wicket, uh, not much pace in it. Bounce a little bit uneven. 69 for Nort off 16 point at two overs. A very good start. Well bowled, and he's out thin edge. That was a good one. First success then for India. Roger Binney. Tamare gone for 32. Joy in the Indian camp, and a comfortable catch for the keeper, Kamani. 69 for one in the 17th over. So England better just by one run, the opening stand that they established against uh, Sri Lanka in the last game, with Chris Tavare out for 32. Two very good balls from Roger Binney, the second just finding the edge of Chris Tavare's back. A minimal deflection. But Kiamani makes no mistake with the catch. And Tavare, the recipient of those two good deliveries, away swingers, is on his way to the pavilion. Hardly a cloud in the sky. Good forecast, just a slight possibility of... Uh, very slight possibility of uh, trouble around about five o'clock. place. Binney takes another wicket. And Fowler clean bowl for 33, leaving England now 84 for two in the 21st over. So two wickets to Binney following up his four the other day against Australia, which won him the man of the match. And looking at this again, you can see that bottom hand coming in. He plays all round this. Binney just holding that one up, a very useful delivery, pitch middle and off, and hit the off stump. But uh, Fowler has played a fine innings and given England a very good start indeed. Yes, a very good delivery there, as you can see on that uh, replay. And have also been a very good ball to a, a right-hander. 
Oh, lovely shot. Our folly put away in great style by Alan Lamb. Gathering pace as it goes through to that extra cover boundary. And again, beautifully controlled. Little clip there by Gower. Kept the angle of the bat down and run it away for a, a very easy single. And balance and keeping the head still. He's got all the attributes to be a very great player. Any youngster watching that shot could uh, do well to take note of it. That's a bit useful too. Struck uh, much more firmly by uh, Lamb. So it was a half folly. It was wide of the off stump. It brings up the hundred. A satisfying position for England here, reaching a hundred in the 25th over for the loss of just two wickets. Was greeted with a. A fine, powerful off drive. Want to be a single in it, but uh, again, it was beautifully struck, and for a change, followed by a very good throw. And that's out. Yes, caught behind Gower. Uh, little uh, slip shot again outside the off stump. Thicky change, and this time Kamani moving away to his left. You could walk quite well, low down. And Gower goes. 107 for three. And David Gower caught Kamani, bowled down enough for 17. So quite a wise shrewd change made there by Kapil Dev and they'll be delighted to see the back of David Gower. We're going to take a break, but here's a trivia question for you along the way. Which batsman holds the record for the highest number of sixes hit in World Cup matches? That's the question for you. Which batsman holds the record for the highest number of sixes hit in World Cup matches? Great joy, great support for Sandu now sporting a different colour. Gatting and Lamb will have to hurry, that's out! Lamb has run out. Very, very quick thinking, a fine piece of cricket by Yashpal Sharma. The initial danger looked to be for Gatting going up the far end. But the danger was for Lamb coming down the other. So that's a very important wicket for India to get. Here it is again, Frank. And Lamb hesitates as he plays that stroke. Going for the sweep, he's rooted to the spot. Finds it difficult to get out of his blocks, and that return from Yashpal, deadly accurate. Travelling the length of the pitch, plus another 20 yards, to find Lamb desperately striving to get home and failing. Failing quite easily. So that's just an indication of the spirit that is embodied in this Indian fielding. They haven't given up, they're right on their toes, and they're coming back into the game with a vengeance. Lamb going for the sweep, off balance as he falls away to the offside. And hesitating, responding to the call very late. Gatting certainly called him through, it was Gatting's call and Lamb quite rightly went for the run in response to Gatting's call. But because he was slow off the mark, failed to make his ground. Oh, oh, oh. out come 
Here's the leg stump. There's the leg cutter. And Gatting never looking comfortable. Crowd are going absolutely mad. The Indian camp over on the far side. What a fine spell by Amanath here. The wicket of Gar. Now that of Gatting. Five down. 150. In the 42nd over. A victim of Amanath. Another batsman to make a start. Receiving a good off cutter from Amanath. Bowled fairly wide on the return crease, cutting back into Gatting. Pass between bat and pad, and I suspect kept a little low. Gatting trying to force the ball away, surprised by the skidding of that ball onto him and losing his leg stump. Ah, oh, that's gone. Well, that turn just freshly kept very low and both of us gone. He's bowled for six by Azad and England in real trouble here at 160 for six. Ball has hit the stump about a foot high and uh, poor old Liam both of us left high and dry. And really this ball going virtually straight along the ground. Ian Botham trying to make room for himself to hit it through the offside when there are only three fielders. And unfortunately he picked the wrong one and I don't, I don't think it, the, any blame can be attached to Ian Botham. The ball was short and he made himself room but it went straight along the deck. Joyful Indian section of the crowd. <laughs> oh, can he stun him? Would you believe it? He's stumped. What a terrible end there for Ian Gould. He's tried everything he knew to get out caught behind. Sets off for an absolutely stupid run to the wicketkeeper who gently rolls it back and he goes stumped. Yes, Jim, I don't think there's any question he got a bottom edge on it. So I think he is ingloriously run out. Yes, if you got an edge, certainly run out. I think the uh, score sheet will have been... Uh, suitably amended there 175 for 7 then in the 53rd over and he's bowling good delivery again from Kapildev cutting back in might just afflict the pads so Vic Marks goes for 8 big trouble for England at 177 for 8 in the 54th over Joyous afternoon for a mass of Indian supporters here. They've really made their presence felt in this enormous crowd. And they're absolutely delighted as Vic Marks makes his way back. And this moved into him off the seam, came back, hit the pad, top of the front pad and into the off stump. I think it would have missed the leg stump. But uh, Vic Marks trying to force the pace and paying the penalty. So 177 for 8 in the 55th over. A related response from an LBW there. But that's a little leg by, brings up the 200 finally for England. It's taken them a long time here in the penultimate over. And they've lost eight wickets achieving it. So the last ball of Roger Binney. Nicely struck, but once again, right to the fielder. So, well done, Roger Binney, 12 overs, one maiden, two for 43, and uh, two very vital wickets, those of the opening pair, Fowler and Tavery. Allett is going to swing, it uh, might well be to the leg side. So he brings an extra man over from the off.
He's given himself room and he's gone. Caught it short third man. Patil takes a catch. Another wicket to Kapildev and Alec goes. 202 for nine. Well, things running for India here because by taking away the third man, I thought he was vulnerable. I thought he might get an outside edge. He did, but it went straight to Patil in, a, in an odd fly-slip position. So the ball really running for it, India. Three balls left. Well, that signal does a wide. Which again uh, doesn't please couple death too much. Well, that may have been a little cruel on Kapildev because Tilly had made a lot of room for himself away from the ball. So with that wide, it still leaves uh, three balls to go. And that's four runs, a thick edge this time. So Graham Diller, very cannily has used both edges of the bat. And one four at the far edge, of inside edge, this one off the outside edge. So he goes on to 19. And that's got to be wide this time, four wides. And that, uh, not a very intelligent delivery from Kapildev. I think one knew entirely what was in his mind. You saw him uh, moving away to give himself room, tried to fire it in at his legs, but fired it uh, much too wide. If there's a margin of uh, six runs at the end of this match, I think uh, somebody might be a little bit cross with themselves. Thud on the middle of the bat for a change. It's just a single. And it takes Graham Dilly on to 20 now. Well, not much has gone right for England in the last hour and a half but these last few minutes will give them quite a bit of encouragement these extra runs again could be very important and at least they've achieved their objective they've they will have batted out their 60 overs and made every bit of use of them that they can that's perfectly timed the last ball of the day Bob Willis's leg stump goes over He's out for naught, and England are dismissed at the end of 60 overs for a score of 213. England all out for 213 in their 60 overs. 60 overs in those days. This is the 1983 World Cup, and the highest score there, Graham Fowler. Look how many England batsmen got starts, but were never able to take it through. Tavare 32, Gower 17, Lamb run out for 29, Gatting 18, Ian Botham failing with six and Ian Gould 13 and uh, Graham Dilley with some important runs at the end. 29 extras conceded by India. Kapil Dev, 11 overs, one maiden, three for 35. Wonderful spell from him. Bawinda Singh Sandhu, eight overs, none for 36. Roger Binney, 12 overs, two for 43. Martin Lal, five overs, none for 15. Kirti Azad, 12 overs, one for 28. That prize scalp of Ian Botham for Kirti Azad. And uh, Mohinder Amanath, 12 overs, two for 27. Well, England have got to be very disappointed with that. 213 in 60 overs. Remember, they won the toss. They had the first choice of batting or bowling. And India would have been very happy with their bowling efforts. It's all for India to do now to get the 214 they need for a place in the 1983 Cricket World Cup final. Let's see how they go. So Willis to start. And a big shout for LBW first ball. Quite shake of the head, and quite rightly too. Possibly going to miss leg stump. Frank Tyson. 
Willis bowling his statutory in swing, pitching just about in line with off stump and angling that ball further down the leg side. A good decision there, as that ball was undoubtedly going to miss leg stump. delivery it looks all right don't think ever start quite timed it but not facing the shot for four more runs and this world-class player moves on to 16 how uh, good it is to see the bat come down straight. Well, Ian, Ian getting this one to move and Shrikant playing a pretty funny sort of a shot. Well, this is the man who used to get England out of trouble every time. He did it for about three years. He hasn't done it for a while. Can he do it now? Somebody's got to. more for a sweetly timed leg glance from Sir Kemp who moves into double figures now on 11 well a bit of native ability coming into play there he didn't know a lot about it but he got the ball away Oh, by word, he's hit that right over the top of Willis at mid-off, four handsome runs. That's the first really belligerent blow we've seen from this flashing stroke maker. Taking it on the up, stood up and just gave it a thrash. India seemed to be to be on course now for what they would regard as a famous victory. Oh. And as soon as one says that, Gavaskar pushes out to Alec. Alec in his second over, took some stick in his first. And Gavaskar has nicked him. Down to Gould, Gavaskar gone for 25. And my word, it was a wicket that England badly wanted. 46 for one in the 14th over. And Paul Allett bowling a lot of half volleys, but now he's found a length, shortened it a little bit, just outside off. And Gavaskar's got a tiny nick to keep a Gould. And Gould's gloves haven't been foolproof, but they were there. Ian Botham, second over to Sir Kanth. It's gone a long way on the leg side, four runs. And Botham will have to get his line and length better than this. Just dismissed from his presence there. Yes, he's an exciting player, Strakant. If the ball is there to hit, he's going to have a go at it. Getting a little rhythm. That's gone high. Willis is underneath it. He doesn't drop much. Oh, beautifully judged. Went up a long way, and Srikanth has perished as we thought he might, playing his natural game, and uh, I dare say that his captain will uh, have a word or two about that. A 
really was a beautifully judged catch. Well, I don't know why he felt that that was the one to try to whack into the stands. But uh, I don't think the ball did anything in particular. And for one moment, Marks was looking to catch it, and Bob Willis has obviously said, Mine! And he stands out of the way while the captain comes across. And Bob Willis, if he gets somewhere near, has those great big hands, he drops very few. A little trivia question for you on the way to a break. Which batsman has scored the most career runs in World Cup matches? Name the batsman who has scored the highest number of career runs in World Cup matches. Pick marks now, bowling from a different end. Full pitch down to mid-on, they might have to hurry. Out comes the stump. The umpire, Don Oslier, uh, David Evans rather, in perfect position. The dipping full toss hit firmly, a bit too firmly really, for the run to mid-on. Mike Gatting. And touch and go. Beautifully struck, just in front of Square on the onside. Tipped away, roll of the wrist, four handsome runs. There's the ball slanting in, gives the bats from the opportunity for the stroke. Fermanath. He's hit that high, and he hit six, has it cleared the rope? Yes, it has, just in front of the side screen, picked it up so easily. Beautifully executed, sideways, nice straight swing of the bat. See the left shoulder pointing at the, at the ball before the strike. Yes, he got it away on the offside. Down on the chase. It'll be an unsuccessful one. 100 up. Great effort. Nobody very interested. At least the batsmen and umpires are not interested. The fielder was very interested. Going forward to claim the catch. And uh, a slight controversy going on at the minute. As he played this shot, the ball's uppish to mid wicket. Derek Randall dives forward is not certain he's caught it and immediately disclaims the catch but David Gower who was next to him said he caught it no question he caught it and uh, anyway Derek Randall wasn't happy and being the sportsman he is he said no catch so it's over five and over India require now 105 20 overs and four balls So there's still a lot of cricket left in this match. And he's gone for a big one and he's fairly middle up. My word, he's given that everything he knew. It's six. And by Oslia giving the signal. And a real cross butted swipe, in fact, there. But it fell in the middle of the bat. That's what counts for India. Good description, Jim. And he's picked out the covers this time. Beautifully controlled extra cover drive. That'll race through for four more. And really has played some extraordinary good shots. Nice use of the feet there. Moving inside this. And a beautiful cover drive there.
Oh, it's a good shot. Beautiful straight drive. And back for two more runs. Indian contingent here getting noisier and noisier as you'd expect. Some uh, very excited supporters out there. That's a good shot too. Just as well they've moved that uh, square leg back onto the boundary. They're scurrying away for the second run and he's gone, he's run out. That was a marvellous throw coming in from uh, Paul Allard out there. And uh, I'm now thinking, I think he was uh, home and dry. Suddenly realised he was in real trouble, put his head down, but couldn't beat that throw. So relief finally for England with a score at 142. With Armanaf going run out for 46. 172 for three. Oh, my word, he thumped that one. Four down to the side screen. India are sailing home at the moment. And it doesn't matter who does the bowling. The immense power of Patel is quite evident in this stroke. As he leans into that ball, which was on a good length, he met it as it was bouncing up and followed through with a strong right hand. And really, that ball skimmed to the boundary through mid on. Comfortable single. And I would think Yashpal is quite happy to cede the strike to Patil at the moment. 54 for Yashpal. stand that he had with uh, Amanath really set them on a winning course 181 for 3 in the 50th over and there's the next man in Kapil Dev what a moment it could be for him and for his whole side A straight thump for four, right off the middle of the bat, a really trenchant shot from Patil. And England are getting some stick now. Sensible hitting this from Patel. The ball struck firmly and straight. And for most of the afternoon and evening, England haven't had men deep and straight. And this just shows you how safe it is to hit back over the bowler's head when those deep fieldsmen are not positioned. An attempted Yorker, I fancy, flicked away just in front of square. Lamb the fielder, two more. Got that away on the leg side, four runs, square. India march past 200 to the joy of their supporters. Roaring home they are through Patil and Yashpal Sharma. Bob Willis to Yashpal Sharma. Four more. And that shot was absolutely characteristic of the uncomplicated way in which India have gone about their task. In batting, they haven't really tried to hit across the line, they haven't tried to force the ball square of the wicket too much. They've simply hit back down the line of the ball, sometimes not classically. Yashpal's foot was not the pitch of that. 
nonetheless, the swing of the bat has been straight and true. It's in the air, it's down to third man, and it's a marvellous catch! My word, the local hero. That was a tremendous catch by Paul Allen. But much good, I fear, may it do England now. Top edge, Frank Tyson. The ball skied high, and look at Allen sprinting around that boundary. What a swift man he is for a fast bowler. Down he goes, gathers the ball, inches from the ground. He's had a wonderful day in the field being instrumental in the Amanat run out when that return came in from the outfield and now this marvellously agile catch dismissed the other major run scorer for India, Yashpal Sharma for 61. And there it is, seven of six overs and it ought to be a dodger. Patil on 42 Suit of that, they've taken two just stopping it short of the rope. They settle on three. One stroke would do them now, four to win. Everybody coming up to save the one now, but everybody. This is a standard procedure when uh, this sort of situation occurs. Stop the one, invite him to hit it through, or over the top. The Indian supporters waiting now to celebrate a tremendous win. Behind square. Kapil Dev having a little conference now with uh, Patil. The appropriate, uh, really, if either of these batsmen were to make the winning score. Patil uh, is thumping innings. It'd be nice for the captain to be in at the last gasp. Very happy looking Kapil Dev. 211 for four. Patil facing Bob Willis. Three runs wanted for India to reach the final. And that will be, I think, two. There's been an invasion, a premature invasion. All right, they're a bit too early. Counting chickens not yet hatched. Yes, I don't think they're counting anything, Peter, because their arithmetic's very bad. They uh, can't add two to 211 and come up with 214. 